The long sword is a sword that is long. What else do you want? This is a beginner guide. If you want actual information, then you should be watching Peppo, not some asshole dinosaur on the internet making jokes every five seconds. Now shut up, because it's time to learn how to long sword. The longsword is a high-risk, high-reward weapon that cycles through building up its spirit gauge and cashing in your spirit meter power to unleash different types of monster repellent in bladed format. Now, the astute viewer may have noticed that the spirit gauge in the top left has a tendency to glow with different colors, those colors being white, yellow, and red, which progressively give your Sephiroth cosplay a stronger ability to miss hitting the tail entirely, despite being the only slashing weapon in the entire party. Now, you may be wondering, how in the great gracious good golly anime titties do I make the spirit gauge strobe harder than a seizing disco ball? The answer is that there are a lot of ways and you need to start asking more specific questions. But since you're new, I'll let this one slide. You build the spirit gauge in one of three different ways. And to demonstrate each of these methods, I brought in a fellow noob who is definitely not me to demonstrate each of the options. Everybody, say hello to Billy. Hello! Shut up, Billy. Each of the three methods that I'll teach you today have the unique property of getting progressively more anime. That is to say, the longsword is a weapon for weebs. In fact, if you aren't watching this with a body pillow, a Mr. Miyagi headband, and a crippling addiction to hentai, then I'm going to need you to go and get your life right. Pause the video right now, and come back when you're ready to be serious. Are they gone? Okay, good. Well, it's just us. Go ahead and like and subscribe. I can guarantee you that you'll receive absolutely nothing other than the satisfaction of knowing you helped an online stranger. Also, there's a Discord where you can hunt with me and Billy. Go join that shit. Like I was saying, there are three different methods of increasing the spirit gauge. They are the spirit round slash combo, the foresight slash, and the special sheet. If you ever can't remember how many different methods there are, just remember there are three which is one more than the number of brain cells that Billy has in his entire body. The spirit combo is the most basic way of gaining a level in the spirit gauge, and it is my preferred... I mean, it's Billy's preferred method of playing the game. If you press the right trigger over and over, you'll initiate the spirit combo and initiate your journey into getting early onset arthritis. The spirit combo goes through a series of moves until it ends with a big side swoop attack. When you do the swoop attack, your meter will go up a level. But I'm on, you didn't teach them how to build the internal meter. Billy, why don't you just shut up and go eat a glass flavored pancake? To build the internal meter, you have to hit the monsters with one of these buttons. Congratulations, now you know how to build the meter so that you can press the right trigger with your arthritic joints and do the swoop attack. The second technique is the foresight slash. The foresight slash is a counter where you flex on the monster by iframing its move and then coming back with a follow up attack. If you hit the follow up attack, you get the opportunity to press the right trigger and do a swoop attack. And like all swoop attacks, you get bumped up a level if you land the hit. This sounds like it has no downside, right? You get to be invincible and slap dinosaurs across the snout for free. And you would be incredibly right if you weren't so incredibly wrong. I mean, look at Billy here. He mistimed his foresight slash, and now he gets to suffer the consequences of his lack of skill. However, if you do manage to execute this attack, you will look moderately cool, which... Let's be honest, moderately cool is 10 times cooler than any of us have ever been. I mean, we spend our free time hunting virtual dinosaurs and not doing normal things like knocking up our prom dates and ruining our lives. I'll let that sink in. But the foresight slash is not as cool as method three, the special sheet. Now, when I say special sheath, I don't mean like putting a kindergartner's macaroni art up on the fridge special or telling an ugly person that they have a beautiful personality special. No, the special sheath is special because whenever you use it appropriately, a monster attack disappears into a pocket dimension on the posterior of the hunter. That is to say, it goes straight up my ass and I take no damage. Once you've mastered the special sheath, there is no other way to play the longsword, which is why I only play... Fuck. I only play... I fuck. The special sheath has you sheath your weapon and begin the ancient art of waiting for some poor bastard to fuck around so that you can introduce them to a heavy dose of find out. Unless of course you mistime your counter, in which case you are the party doing the fucking around and the monster is about to introduce you to the aforementioned Ooh. find out. Your reward for properly countering is a rank up in your spirit gauge and your punishment for failing is getting put in a failure compilation on Twitter.
Yikes. You also have a second option when sheathing your weapon, which is pressing this button. Pressing this button will do a slash and passively generate your internal meter. It will also prove to everyone that you are a huge man-child unworthy of the lolly posters in your bedroom. And that's it. Those are the definitive three ways to rank up your spirit gauge. There are definitely no other ways to rank up your spirit gauge. But you did talk about the soccer slash wirebug skill that definitely ranks up your spirit gauge. Silly me, I forgot to talk about some of the switch skills that interact with your spirit gauge as well. Let's talk about those for a second. In Rise, you gained access to Silkbind skills. Silkbind skills are selectable loadout options that change the way your weapons work. Some of these options consume wire bugs by pressing a combination of this button and one of these buttons. The first switch skill is not one of those cool attacks, so let's go ahead and get it out of the way. You get the choice between the Step Slash and the Giga Chad Ultra Attack, also known as the Drawn Double Slash. If you can't tell which option I think is better, then you clearly don't put the same amount of value in sound effects as I do. The Drawn Double Slash has all the same powers as the Step Slash, except it has the power of Hyper Armor. So the second you unlock this bad boy, slap that shit in all your loadouts and don't ever change it. Your second switch skill will impact what form of swoop attack you perform. You can either do the spirit round slash combo or you can do the spirit reckoning combo. The round slash combo is a little easier for me to hit, but the reckoning combo is a complete assertion of dominance as you thrust your sword into a lizard's jugular and teach them about how levers and fulcrums work. If you didn't get my lever joke, then that might be your cue to go do some research on rudimentary physics so that you can appreciate my comedic prowess. You aren't that funny! Wait, no! Now, let's get into the cool skills. Longsword got access to a couple of options for their two active wirebug abilities. For a first wirebug skill, there are two options. It may look like there are three choices, but this is the trick deployed by Capcom to trap noobs into a death spiral of ignorance. Tempered Spirit Blade gives you yet another parry. I don't use it because you have to time the parry correctly and then you get your full meter and your rank up in Spirit Gauge. You know what also gives you a free rank of Spirit Gauge and has no skill expression required through the execution of a well-timed parry? The Silkbind Sakura Slash. Speaking of, for one wire bug, the Silkbind Sakura Slash attack pulls you forward and delivers two initial hits, followed up by several delayed rapid strikes to the monster. It then grants you a level of spirit gauge for effectively doing nothing. And yes, I didn't talk about this earlier when we were talking about ranking up the spirit gauge, because it's the only way that I... I mean, Billy knows how to upgrade his spirit gauge, and I'm incredibly disappointed in myself. I mean Billy. Competing for this slot and also costing one wire bug is the rising kick attack which will have you leap into the heavens and channel all the power of God, anime, Chuck Norris, the entire Czech Republic, a small dog named Benny, but most importantly gravity before plummeting down to the earth and delivering death via delayed slashes. You may be thinking, wow, that attack looks pretty cool, and that's because you're a weeb. Here's a compilation of other things that you probably also think look pretty cool. Your other wirebug abilities are the Serene Pose and Harvest Moon, which both cost two wirebugs. Serene Pose is basically a get out of jail free card. For the cost of one spirit gauge level and two wirebugs, you can basically counter anything, process the counter damage via the pocket dimension residing in your rectum, and channel the dragon's rage, hate, and your partially digested bean burrito into one decisive smack. Competing for the slot is Harvest Moon, which makes a ring around you so you can run your own underground cockfighting circle where you are a participating chicken and the opponent is a fucking dragon. While inside the circle, your counterattacks like the special sheath do more damage and if you try to go outside the circle, you get to feel pretty stupid because the circle disappears and you wasted two wire bugs. This is a skill for good players, like my there are two other skill options that we haven't talked about yet. Namely, the Special Sheath versus the Sacred Sheath. The Special Sheath, which we talked about previously, allows you to miraculously absorb dragon fire via asshole. The Sacred Sheath trades the impossibly ridiculous power of counters for a chance to funnel all of your spirit gauge into your sword so that you can do big number. For each spirit gauge level consumed, your Sacred Sheath will add another progressively more powerful attack into the Sheath combo. The third hit of that combo 
rivaling the power of the great sword. But nobody can touch you, my sweet prince. The downside to this sheath option is that if a monster hits you at any point during the sheath animation, you get knocked out of the skill and lose all of your spirit gauge. But before you demonstrate how well you can eat a Diablo's charge to the face and lose all three levels of meter, let's talk about how these switch skills impact your playstyle. With the array of switch skills available, two generally accepted playstyles have arisen from the bowels of the internet. One focuses heavily on counters inside of Harvest Moon and using Rising Kick to spin meter, which I call the Path of the Weeb. The other focuses on sucking on paint chips like their Jolly Ranchers while using Sakura Slash to build meter and using Sacred Sheath to eat all your meter and pretend you're a greatsword player, which I call the Path of the Cro-Magnon. The Path of the Weeb is what most speedrunners use. This is what the internet will tell you is the correct way to play the weapon. And I'm here to tell you to quit being a sheep and letting other people tell you what to do with your life. Now sit down, shut up, and listen to this hot wad of knowledge I'm about to unload on you. This method of play is completely contingent on you being able to consistently hit counters, which means you're going to need a lot of monster knowledge, which, you know, you're watching a beginner guide. You have none. Executing this playstyle correctly will make you hotter than an incel at a fedora convention, while executing it poorly will make you more flaccid than a penis in a naked old man in the sauna convention. Yes, making jokes is hard unlike a penis at a naked old man in a sauna convention. Contrast the path of the weeb with the path of the Cro-Magnon. Is it the fastest method of hunting? No, but let's be honest, you aren't a speedrunner, and that's okay. Also, there are some speedrunners who are putting up respectable times with the sacred sheath, so if you aspire to have the pressure of mistiming one button press and downward spiraling into crippling alcoholism, then fear not, you probably can play this play style too. The good thing about the sacred sheath is that it grants you power armor throughout the entire sheath attack animation. You'll still take damage from the attacks you power armor through, but at least your entire game won't grind to a halt by mistiming a counter. The only real way to mess up is if you get hit while charging your sword, and then you're gonna feel really stupid. And I want to tell you that you shouldn't, but you should. Somebody call a doctor! Shut up, Billy! I'd like to think that now you've evolved from a proto-oozling to an awkward bipedal amoeba with a longsword. You know how you're supposed to swing the sheet of metal around? It kind of. And you know the theory. Are you gonna become the Weeaboo Avenger or the fake greatsword player? Only you can decide what's best for you, but I'd recommend trying out both playstyles. Ultimately what matters is killing the monster and having fun. With that being said, let's go grab our body pillows, our training headbands, and our two brain cells, and stab a bird wyvern in the cloaca. So, you think you can beat me? I'll have you know that I watched the beginner guide to playing the longsword. My blade cuts as fast as light. You wanna see? Check your foreskin.